coming up on an all-new episode of Inside Israeli Basketball. We spend time at a local zoo with Maccabi Haifa's American guard Richard Roby as he and his family adapt to life in Israel. For most professional basketball players, the game began on the hard courts of the playground. Maccabi Haifa shares some of their first basketball memories. Maccabi Haifa continues to climb the Super League standings. We have highlights in the Haifa report. We recap last month's Super League action as teams begin to shake up the standings. Playing in a foreign country can be a challenge. We learn how American players adjust their game in the Super League. And in our player profile, one of the newest Haifa guards who has plenty of experience playing overseas, Jesse Pellet Rosa. All that and more coming up next on Inside Israeli Basketball. Hi everyone and welcome. This is Inside Israeli Basketball and I'm Becky Griffin. Richard Roby joined Maccabi Haifa this past November in hopes of adding another scoring option alongside Jason Rich and Devon Jefferson. His brother Kenyon Martin was the first player chosen in the 2000 NBA draft. So Kenyon had some words of advice for Richard as he develops as a player and a person here in Haifa. Just always be professional about the job. Always put your best foot forward. Um, your work habits um, can go a long way. I love the way he shoots the ball. The jump shot is pure. Ready? Go! The basketball is good. Israeli players are really smart players. This year, I think, is one of the deepest leagues this year in, uh, in Europe, you know, from top to bottom. It's a different style of basketball, but at the same time, it's still basketball. The objects is put the ball in the hole more than the opponent. I just got to keep working on ball handling, and you can always improve on your shot and your ball handling, and, and just showing teams that I, I can play defense. You know, that was kind of my stigma I have with me a long time is that I don't play great defense, but you know, I'm trying to get rid of that and you know Hype is a defensive oriented team so I'm trying to have a chance to do that here. The University of Colorado's all-time leading scorer is learning to adjust his game as well as his daily life in Israel. It's a great part of the world. You know this is Israel, you know, this is the Holy Land, you know, you got, you got Jerusalem here, you got your Africa's here, you gotta go, Egypt's right around the corner, um, and, it's, and it's just, and it's, it's a fun time, you know, and just enjoy, just enjoy life. I'm getting a chance to see the world, you know, I never thought I would get a chance to be in Israel and, you know, bring my family to Israel. I was scared at first because, like, leaving the airport, you don't see really anything. But then when you get to the city, it's like just it sprouts up out of nowhere. But it was an easy transition because everyone speaks English. There's good food. I like food. So. <laughs> it was easy. I can't imagine being away from uh, from my daughter. <laughs> it was kind of an easy decision for me because I wanted him to be a part of her life, like not, not miss the whole first year, all of the milestones. Look at those teeth, these are braces. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wow, what's up, man? Hi! Okay. I like Haifa. I love the beach. I'm a beach girl. That was fun. The people are really nice. It was a very safe place. You know, it's, it's not how people how people think. So, you know, it's a great place to raise your family. Richard Roby hopes to one day return to the States and possibly play in the NBA along with his half-brother, Kenyon Martin. He really inspired me to see somebody that was my family, you know what I'm saying, go to the NBA and be the number one pick in the draft. Um, really inspired me and just show that you can do anything if you, know what I'm saying, if you work hard. Talent-wise, he has everything. Shoot, dribble, solid rebound, things like that. So basketball skills and everything, there's nothing that he's lacking. In my eyes, I think he's a pro. Um, 
I think she was playing the NBA right now. Well, he knows players that played here, so he knew it was a good place. You know, he said, go out there and just do what you have to do and try and get back here. And that's what I'm trying to do. I just want him to excel, at, whether it's overseas or if he gets the opportunity to go back to the States. I'm just, I'm here for the ride. Just, I hope he just does well at whatever, whatever team he's on. Coming up, how playing basketball as a youth has influenced Maccabi Haifa players. Basketball is truly a global game. All over the world, kids at a young age begin learning and loving the sport in similar settings. The playground. A few of Maccabi Haifa players shared some of their fondest childhood memories with us as they took their first basketball steps on the hard courts of Israel. To play in the playground is like the most pure uh, basketball because this is the time that you come to play only because you want to, you love to, you love to play with your friends. Uh, it's not about money, it's not about uh, nothing, you know, it's only you and your first love. The first time I played basketball, I was driving a bike, and then the coach called me, this is the, and tell me, hey, there is a basketball team over here, come to play with us. There was missing one guy, so they called me, and this is the, the point I started to play. When I start to play basketball, I go also to football practice. And over there, they hit me, so I, so I say I stay in basketball. <laughs> and I'm 13. I tried to dunk the first time of my life. I, I did it, but I fell on the, and my back. You're laughing, but it was true. And I almost broke my back, and I was like out for like a week sitting home, but uh, it was fun. Nice feeling to them. <laughs> I remember that I used to come back from high school with a school bus, throwing the bag in, a, in my house, taking the basketball and go to play. Usually on the playground you play three against three. If you win, you stay. If you lose, you wait. Horse. Everybody know horse. One-on-one. -on -one. Basketball is an uh, international uh, language, and uh, I think that uh, pretty much the same games that uh, they play in the States, they play in Israel and uh, every, every, every other place in Europe. The game over here is it, it, it's so different, you know, because they stress fundamentals from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? So I think although it is street ball, they still you know, have those certain fundamentals of, of basketball that they include in that. You know, and I'm sure that, you know, this league being the way it is, it's, it's played very fast. Uh, you're allowed to really show a lot more creativity, I think, than, than some other places. And I think the kids are watching that, you know what I'm saying, from the different players throughout the league. And, and they, you know, they, they, they probably think just how we think. I remember when I was growing up playing street ball, I took a little piece of everybody's game that I liked, and I I would be out there working on those moves, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm sure it's no different over here. You know, I'm sure the kids are doing the exact same thing. It reminds me when I was little, growing up, playing in the rec leagues and everything, seeing these guys play. I'm like, oh, man, I remember those days. <laughs> the year spent on the playground have paid off, as we'll see in our highlights. Maccabi Haifa is building momentum after a strong February. This puts them among the top four teams in the Super League. Week 13, Haifa all over Rishon Lezion, 95-81. Rishon just couldn't stop power forward Davon Jefferson, who dominated with 28 points and nine rebounds. Next up, a revenge match against Gilboa Galil, who beat Haifa by 30-plus earlier in the season. 
Several key Hypha contributors were down and out due to illness or injuries, so Hypha's bench stepped up. They helped carry the team to an 80-78 victory, which really wasn't that close. Four Hypha players ended up in double figures, including Jason Rich, who led the team with 18. Rich did an outstanding job defensively, holding the high-scoring Jeremy Pargo to just nine points. Point guard Amit Ben David scored a season-high 17 points, filling in for Draw Hajar. Richard Roby also dropped 17, and Ido Kuzakaro was a force down low. He had 14 points. Haifa recently signed former NBA player Mamadou Anja to bolster their roster. The seven-foot center from Senegal can really be a help down low as Haifa prepares to make a playoff run. Adding this kind of pressure under the board shores up a lack of depth in the post for Maccabi Haifa as they continue to battle Jerusalem for second place and seek to solidify their spot in the final four. next, which teams are gaining ground in the Super League standings, and how do American players adjust to the Super League? Welcome back. Inside Israeli Basketball takes a look around the Super League as the playoff picture is starting to take shape. As the final stretch of the regular season approaches, several teams still find themselves in the playoff hunt. Hopewell Halone is looking to make a last minute push into the top half of the standings. The team had an amazing upset victory over Jerusalem in week 14, thanks to the help of several new additions. One of the new players is shooting guard Antonio Graves, who played his college ball in the Big East at Pitt. He scored a game high 19 points. Halone then followed up with another upset win against Maccabi Haifa. Maccabi Tel Aviv continues their Super League dominance with three straight wins by 20 points or more. This is a balanced team. Five players are averaging double figures on offense. Yoboa Galil ended a three-game losing streak with an 87-83 victory against Rishon Letzion. The team's leading scorer once again was Jeremy Pargo with 19 points. The brother of Chicago Bulls guard Gennaro Pargo is in the league's top 10 with over 16 points per game. Natanya is making a push into the top four, creating a tight race with Maccabi Haifa and Gaboa Galil. Marco Killingsworth and Tony Washam are Natanya's leaders both putting up double-doubles in a majority of their games this season. Killingsworth is second in the league in scoring and third in the league in rebounds. The playoff race is only beginning to heat up as the end of the season approaches. an American playing in the Super League, you quickly learn that adjustments need to be made to your game. We had a chance to talk specifics with some of the Haifa players and head coach Avi Ashkenazi. I think the biggest adjustment is um, uh, the, the style of play over here is different than in America or when I was in Puerto Rico. That's the main thing is just, you know, the offense and, and running the offense all the way through. From the college game, for me, it was a lot different because here there's a lot of pick and rolls and a lot of a lot of big guys stepping out on the perimeter. And back home, I just had to sit in the paint, you know, block shots and get rebounds. But here I got to, you know, jump out here and there. And that, that was really the biggest difference for me. Everybody can shoot. 
I think um, international, the, um, the big man can shoot a little bit better. Over here, they teach you back door, um, how to use both hands, how to jump off both feet, you know, just different. Instead of playing more one-on-one, -on -one, here, playing uh, more as a team, uh, and uh, with more patience, and uh, less open court. Unfortunately, I <laughs> myself like the open court game and flowing, but uh, the game is not like that. Uh, it's different tempo, it's different tempo, and uh, playing uh, more sets and, uh, and tactically, it's different than state, and they used to play different games. Set the good screens, keep doing things with continuation, play together, it will be easy, remember what we talk. Let's go! You know, you kind of have to build a foundation and chemistry, you know, because, um, I mean, you can't just go out there and just say, give me the ball, let me drive, let me do this, let me do that, because, you know, um, the teams are very good at, you know, uh, taking away first and second options, you know, so, and that was something that teams, you know, could do in America, but I think it, so far, you know, over here, it's been something that you just have to understand, you got to be patient, and you got to got to really learn this style of play. So I used to um, do the American jab step, and they used to always call it travel on me, so I had to, it took me a few weeks, a month or something, to get used to that. I used to have a lot of turnovers in the beginning, so just, I'm used to just going. It's, it's a completely different game than the American game, especially in college, you know, it's, and in the NBA, it's a, it's a very one-on-one -on -one oriented game, whereas here, it's, it's all team oriented, and it's all running a team offense and a motion offense. The, the game in Europe is more based on, on team effort, on team. In the state, they need to play more one-on-one, -on -one. and this is my job and coach's job, and all the, the players that play in Europe already, job is to, to try to help them and show them the, the way to play right in Europe. Basketball is international language, so... It's uh, maybe a little, a little difference between the European basketball and the American basketball, but basically it's an it's international language, so that's the language that we all speak. When we come back, Jesse Pellet Rosa tests his skills in Israel. Paintball skills, that is. According to Israeli law, each man and woman aged 18 are enlisted into the armed forces to help keep the country safe. Jesse Pellet Rosa knew this about teammate Ido Kujikaro and decided to test himself against the skills that Ido learned some 15 years ago. Then he thought twice and enlisted Jeremy Tyler's assistance for some flanking support. It almost worked. I'm here with a couple of my teammates at a paintball facility. Oh, it's coming off. It's about to be war, baby. I'm going Rambo style. Put the hat down. Oh, this way? I ain't never done this before. They call me Rambo in the jungle. Hey, y'all didn't get your paintball. Oh, where you gonna put my hand Let's rock and roll. Hey, what's up, baby? You want some? It took two of us to take down the big, the big monster. I don't want none, man. I'm just joking, man. Jesse is loud. Jesse is a very, very positive character, and <laughs> we have a lots of jokes. We we have a lots of fun with him. Edo, a cool guy, man. I love Edo, man. He, he's always joking with me. Edo, the one guy that messes me more than anybody on the team, I think. <laughs> you see him over there laughing now. He, he's got one volume that's super loud. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's a cool dude. So outgoing, you know, he's 
always, what up, man? What up? How you doing? What up, shawty? What up, shawty? You know. What's up? That's just the way I am, man. You know, I just like to go out and just work hard and just have fun and just keep everybody else happy. Jesse Pellet Rosa, a former college hoop star from Virginia Commonwealth who also had a brief career with the NFL's New York Jets, got the call he'd been waiting for. My career has been, you know, an uh, unbelievable story. I started, I played football and basketball in high school. Then after that, I went to prep school and I played football there. Coach Cable, who is now in Oklahoma, remembered me from Richmond, Virginia, playing high school basketball. I played basketball all four years. We didn't have a football team there at my school. No football at Virginia Commonwealth. So then uh, I got a call from the New York Jets, asked me was I interested in still playing football. So I was like, you know, yeah, I, I'll give it a shot. You know, why not? I played the first preseason game against Atlanta Falcons, and they let me go. <laughs> after that, I went back to school, got my degree in December. Then I went to Puerto Rico last summer. Then I, this past year, I went to Denmark. No, no, before Denmark, I signed a deal in Iceland. The economy went bankrupt, so I had to go home. Then Denmark, they signed me. Then I went to Iceland, called me back for the playoffs. During the same year, this same year, they called me back for the playoffs. So after that, I went straight to Puerto Rico. I was the leading scorer over there, leading scorer in Denmark. I did really well in Iceland, so this is a great opportunity for me for the Maccabi team to give me an opportunity in a better league. Cut. Game over. That'll do it for this edition of Inside Israeli Basketball. Remember to catch Super League highlights each week on the web at triangleinternet.tv. Thanks for joining us.